It's getting to be a habit, winning at Wrigley Field in come-from-behind fashion. Ted Lilly, who has earned three of his five victories at home, takes the mound as the Cubs look to make it five in a row. Next. here on a warm, windy, and yes, rainy afternoon. You might want to pick up a poncho on the way in, but we are set for Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet. The Cubs are rolling here at home. They're 4-0 on the homestand, and today they play the Rockies in game two of this series. And hi again, everyone, along with Bob Brenly, I'm Len Casper. The Cubs are playing very well against the National League West. Good timing because uh, up through a week from Sunday, they're going to play nothing but teams from the West. Yeah, you call that taking care of business. The Western Division is a little bit down this year. The Diamondbacks are the only team in the Western Division with a plus 500 record. You see what the Cubs have done. They have absolutely murdered the Western Division this year to the tune of 11 wins against only two losses. Jim Edmonds is back in the lineup against right-hander Aaron Cook in this ballgame, and uh, that's good for him, too, because he's had a lot of success. Yeah, he's had great success against Aaron Cook in his career, and right now the Cubs are looking for anything to get Jim Edmonds jump-started, get that bat going so he can contribute to the offense. Seven for 13 lifetime with a couple of home runs and a double against Aaron Cook. And while Edmonds has had a lot of success against the sinker baller, not a lot of others have this year. He's uh, been very, very good for the Rockies. He's been really good. He had a string of six consecutive victories. That was broken up by two very subpar outings. But last time out, 118 pitch complete game against the Mets. You see his numbers on the season, the 7-3 and three record, 282 ERA. Ted Lilly, a very workmanlike effort last time in Pittsburgh. Did not have his best stuff, gave up 10 base hits, but kept his team in the ballgame. Of all the keys this week, really the starting pitching has kept the Cubs in ball games. Offensively, the Cubs just finding a way now to get that big hit when they need it. Yeah, they're not exploding offensively like they did during the last homestand when they were just bludgeoning opposing teams, but they're coming up with the big hits when they need them, especially late. All right, the first pitch is right around the corner, but let's go down to the field and our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bomb bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Nicely done by Michael Whalen, putting his stamp on the national anthem. Coming up, Ted Lilly tries to keep it going. The Cubs starters with a 198 ERA on this homestand. Cubs baseball is next. Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by Chevy. Log on now to ChevyDriveChicago.com. Check us out today, ChevyDriveChicago.com. Midas for brakes, oil changes, tires, and more. Trust the Midas Touch. Your Chicago area Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Menards. and Menards, you'll find big lumber yards, big selection, and big savings. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, we want to give you the security to experience wellness everywhere. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 
Cadillac, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit, and by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines, you're now free to be more productive. Visit Southwest.com today. Well, we're ready to go. Nice job by the grounds crew to get this field ready and uh, the giveaway today. As Jerry Crawford, the, the new crew chief for this one, chatting with Lou Pinella. Some uh, vacation giveaways courtesy of Apple Vacations. Kind of interesting, Jerry Davis was the crew chief last night and he worked home plate. He has been replaced today by Jerry Crawford, who will work third base. Maybe he took one of those Apple vacations. Could be. Nice segue. Walking on the beach this morning as we speak. Well, it is warmed up considerably. The wind is blowing out. And we are dry at the moment as the Cubs take the field behind left-hander Ted Lilly. Let's take a look at the Rocky Southwest starting lineup. They've dropped nine straight and 15 of 17 on the road, tied for the worst record currently in the majors. Willie Tavares had a big hit off the bench last night. He'll start in center. Jonathan Herrera, a switch hitting second baseman, bats second. Spielborg's in left, Atkins at third. Todd Helton moving down against the lefty. Chris Iannetta will catch. Jeff Baker's in right. Omar Quintanilla's at short. And Aaron Cook does a nice job with the bat. He hits ninth. Take a look at the Cubs. Rico defense. Soriano, Edmonds, and Fukudome across the outfield. A couple of changes on the infield. Mark DeRosa will play third base today. Ronnie Cedeno at shortstop. Mike Fontenot getting a start at second base. Derek Lee over at first base as usual. Giovanni Soto doing the catching today for left-hander Ted Lilly. See his numbers for the season. Yeah, really surprising numbers. The left handers hitting nearly 300 against Ted Lilly. That's something he would like to whittle down as the season progresses. Game conditions, comfortable temperature, high humidity, a lot of wind, and a soggy forecast. What a short delay before we get going here. Paul Nart. Will handle the balls and strikes. Hoy Onora and the aforementioned crew chief Jerry Crawford on the bases. Well, you know, Len, we mentioned a couple of changes in the lineup for Lou Pinella today. He has done a masterful job this year of pitching, picking his spots to get the bench guys in and to rest the regulars. And to that end, Ryan Terrio 0 for 8 against Aaron Cook. Aramis Ramirez 0 for 10 against Aaron Cook. So this seems to be a pretty good day to give those guys a little bit of a rest, get some of the bench players in there and let them take their hacks. And a much improved bench. Who has been able to get spot starts for guys like Ronnie Cedeno and Mike Fontenot. Basically in a platoon situation in center right now with Johnson and Edmonds. Michael Hoffpower has done a really nice job off the bench since he's been here filling in for Daryl Ward. It's a nice luxury to have. So it'll be Lilly against Tavares. Herrera and Spielborgs to follow here in the first inning. DeRosa plays in on the grass at third base. Tavares showing bunt and taking ball one. We are underway. Good idea to play in on the grass with Willie Tavares at the plate. Six bunt hits on the season already to go along with 13 infield hits. Speed is his main asset. A 22 minute rain delay. There's the bunt. Lilly picks it up. The throw. Safe. Cubs knew it was coming and they still could not get Tavares. Well, Willie Tavares has the kind of speed he doesn't have to put down a perfect bunt to beat it out. That ball was pretty much uh, between home plate and the mound. Ted Lilly got to it quickly, barehanded the ball, threw on to Derek Lee. Ooh, a very close play. But they might have had him. Almost a tie. And now you got to keep an eye on Tavares over there at first base as well. 20 out of 21 in stolen base attempts this year. A 
You think about how fast Tavares gets down the line. Just think if he were a left-handed hitter, he would have even more of a head start. That's why a lot of players like Tavares end up becoming switch hitters. He's trying to slap the ball on the ground and get that head start hitting left handed. Well, you don't have to be a great hitter from the left side of the plate. You really just need to be able to make contact and consistently put the ball on the ground. Yeah he was going to try to switch hit in the Arizona Fall League after the 04 season but had a hamstring injury and the switch never happened. So that was considered early in Tavares's pro career. Well, it wasn't that early actually he was signed in 1999. By the Cleveland Indians. Ryan Terrio was a switch hitter at one point. Well, now the sun is peeking through here at Wrigley Field. Some of the sweatshirts and ponchos are coming off. That's it, right? Yeah, so far. Just the ponchos and sweatshirts. I'll, I'll keep you posted. Okay. Though. <laughs> Guy at the plate, Jonathan Herrera. He's a switch hitter. Middle infielder is playing second base. He takes ball two from Lilly, two and one. A quick timeout on the field. Ronnie Cedeno going to make his way back to that third base dugout, get his sunglasses. As we mentioned, the sun just started to peek through. A very heavy overcast most of the morning here at Wrigley, but starting to see some signs of sunshine. The lights were turned on. Because of the dark skies, and they remain on even though the sun is out. Could be changing throughout the afternoon. Kick in the pitch, runner going, fouled back. But Tavares is having a hard time reading Ted Lilly's move over there at first base. That was a hit and run, and he did get a very late break off first base. But even on the pitches that Ted Lilly has delivered to home plate, Tavares has been leaning back toward first, just not getting a real good read on his move. We'll see how late he breaks for second base. Ted had already strided toward home plate and was in the process of releasing that ball before Tavares made his break for second. He goes again a little late. Herrera fouls that one away. Lilly has won four consecutive decisions. He has not lost in May. This is his final start, uh, the second to last day of the month. His last defeat was on April 27th in Washington. key for him will be to keep the ball in the ballpark he gave up three solo home runs his last time out and a no decision at Pittsburgh another foul that time Tavares was not running one of these pesky at bats you don't like to have early in the ball game Herrera just Continuing to battle and get a piece of the ball, foul it out of play, foul it out of play, running up that pitch count here in the first inning. And Lilly really taking his time with the speedy Tavares at first. He goes again, another foul. I've seen this movie a few times. <laughs> Really making an effort to try to shoot that ball through the right side of the infield as Tavares is on the move. Every swing he's taken after getting the two strikes has been an inside out variety swing, trying to shoot that ball through the right side. The pitch out wouldn't be all bad here, too, too. If you've got confidence that Ted Lilly can come back on the full count pitch and make a good pitch. Instead of throw over to first base. Normally you don't like to call a pitch out and put your pitcher in a full count situation but if you're sure that runner at first base is going to be going we'll take a shot. 
The next 2 2 runner was not going, and it served into right center for a base hit. Tavares trying to get to third base. Here's a throw by Edmonds, and it's a little late. So Tavares was able to go first to third as that ball was feathered out into right center by Jonathan Herrera. Very good at bat. And the Rockies have runners at the corners with no outs. Edmonds a little lackadaisical coming in after this soft floater into shallow right center field. He kind of shied away and then at the last minute realized Tavares was not slowing down around second base. He's able to go first to third. The ball hit into shallow center field. And you got to keep an eye on Herrera over there at first base as well. He had a 34 stolen base season in the minors. Averaged over 20 stolen bases in his minor league career. Another foul ball. The bat of the Rockies hitter is Ryan Spillboards. Off to a good start this season. He had three hits in the opener. Pitch swung on and missed. <laughs> 0 and 2 on spillboards. He's struggling. Garrett Atkins is on deck. Spillboards is not struggling. He's eight for his last 17. Well, we talked about him last night. This guy's a good hitter. Not many people realize it, but. Lifetime 297 batter coming into the season. Caught by DeRosa for the first out. It was struck well by Spillboards, and DeRosa went up to get it. Nicely done. Big breaking ball. Spielborgs timed it perfectly, but Lou Pinella puts his taller third baseman in the lineup today, and Mark DeRosa able to go up the ladder and make the play. Garrett Atkins is one for 13 since coming back from the neck and back injury. Knocked him out of commission for three games. Hitting 322. Good for eight in the National League. Linda's 40. Congratulations. Happy birthday, Linda. Koske comes in and Tavares is not even tagging up. Standing about three steps off of third base. Knowing that he wasn't going to be able to test Koske and the ball hit that shallow. Now Lilly has a chance to get out of it. Now he'll have to make a pitch against Todd Helton. Continues to get on base right now at 408 with his on base percentage. He's slugging just 398. Well, we talked about Helton facing left handed pitchers in the ball game last night. I really believe that uh, you almost have to pitch him backwards in, in breaking ball counts, throwing fastballs, and fastball counts, throwing breaking balls. Especially when he's behind in the count, he tends to look for that off speed breaking ball. Oh. Turned him away, one and nothing. His power way down to start this season. He has slugged 577 in his major league career, and right now he's under 400. We saw the runners in scoring position note uh, top the active list. What that tells you is he's a really good hitter. Albert Pujols, Ichiro, all on that list. That's deep sending Edmonds back, and he's going to watch it go. It's a home run. And just as I said, Todd Helton was not hitting for power. He just hit a three-run homer. That's his fifth of the year, his 308th career home run.
And we talked last night, Bob, about how much he has struggled here in this ballpark. 227 lifetime hitter coming into this series against the Cubs. That time just fought off a high fastball. Our Belvedere home run replay, the first of the day. Todd Helton with a three run homer to the left of straightaway center field to put the Rockies on the board. Much does it take out of you? It, let's say Lily gets out of the inning. It, it was a stressful inning because he had runners at first and third with no outs, had to make several big pitches. And how deflating is it to almost get out of it and then give up that three run home? Well, I guess a young pitcher, I think it may have more of an effect than a veteran like Ted Lilly. Uh, not to make light of it, but it's happened to him before. And he's usually found a way to regroup, go back out there, and keep his team in the ballgame while the offense. Tries to get something going against Aaron Cook. Hopefully that'll be the case again today. And to follow up on your point, that's probably one of the toughest and biggest things to get over for a young pitcher at this level. Well, there's nothing you can do about it now. You can't bring back the pitch. Uh, you can't put in a taller center fielder and have him leap up into the bleachers and make a play. There's three runs on the board right now. But if you can hold them right there with the Cubs offense swinging the bats the way they have here at Wrigley Field, yeah, you like your chances. A 2 2 pitch to the catcher Ionetta and he finds the alley out in right center he'll have an extra base hit. That's four knocks already and Lester Strode who's the acting pitching coach today will head out. Larry Rothschild has a family function back home in Florida for his daughter Charlotte's graduation. So Lester will handle the pitching staff today. Not a bad pitch, but a nice piece of hitting by Ionetta. That was a backdoor slider. Barely caught the outside corner of the plate, but Ionetta stayed with it and found that gap in right center field. I'm sure Larry Rothschild, uh, much like a, a regular teacher, would leave instructions for a substitute teacher. Probably had certain key phrases and things to say to Ted Lilly and the other pitchers as Lester has to make mound visits today. Matt Sinatra looking very studious as the bullpen coach today, and Ivan De Jesus will handle his chores at first. Jeff Baker. It's a deep to left. Soriano will play it off the wall. It hit just beneath the basket. Ionetta scores. And already five hits for the visitors. Ted gave up a season high 10 hits in his last start. And they've knocked him around here today. Inner part of the plate fastball. Baker just missed getting one up in the basket right there. Hey, this is every pitcher's worst nightmare, not even getting an opportunity to get comfortable on your own home mound. Tavares started it off with that bunt hit, and it's gone downhill since then. Quintanilla, the shortstop, and the eight hitter with the pitcher Aaron Cook now in the on deck circle. John Lieber is up quickly. And it's the one thing, Bob, about playing a team that has struggled. Like the Rockies had. This game works in cycles, and at some point, you know an offense is going to really get it going, and you just don't want to be that team on the other end of it when it happens. Seven first inning runs in. Is this is his 12th start of the season today? Caught by Fontenot. That ball was hit hard, but Mike was able to make the catch. So the Cubs will need to get a bunch of runs today for their starter, Lily. Cubs coming up, down four to nothing. Kenny, wife of Cubs chairman Crane Kenny. Kelly threw out the first pitch. She got it there in the air. Nicely done. Let's check in on the Cubs Southwest starting lineup. They're 12 games over 500. Going to have to come from behind again today. Soriano, Fontenot in there for DeRosa. Lee at first, Soto cleaning up for the second time in his career. Kosuke is in right, 
Edmonds in center. DeRosa moves over to third for Ramos. Cedeno spells Terry O and Ted Lilly, the pitcher, hitting ninth. For the Rockies defensively, Spielborgs, Tavares, and Baker across the outfield. Atkins and Quintanilla on the left side of the infield. Herrera and Helton on the right side. Chris Ionetta doing the catching today for right hander Aaron Cook. We'll see a lot of that today. Sinker, sinker, sinker. He basically features a sinker and a slider, tries to keep everything down in the zone. Averaging nearly two and a half ground ball outs for every fly ball out this season. Ball and a strike on Soriano. Two for five last night. Knocked in a pair with a late inning single. 1-1 one, one pitch. There's a ground ball. You're going to hear that a lot. Herrera throws a little high, but no problem for Helton. Sinker slider I mentioned earlier uh, he does have some trouble getting inside on left handed hitters that sinker tends to tail back over the heart of the plate and it goes without saying offensively you want to make him get the ball up if that pitch starts in the middle of the thighs it's probably going to end up low out of the strike zone resulting in ground balls Mike Fontenot looks at strike one he's two for seven versus Cook. Cubs scored just two runs in eight innings against Cook at Coors Field on April 24th. He got the 4-2 win. He was very efficient with his pitch count, 97 pitches over those eight innings. He's been just terrific this year, coming off a complete game win over the Mets. 11 starts, he's gone at least six innings ten times. Eight times, he's gone seven. That sounds like an ace. Yes, indeed. And you talked about his efficiency. He leads all National League pitchers in fewest pitches per inning. Just under 14. Just off the fingers, I guess. Two two round ball surrounded by Quintanilla. And this is really the day when you want Cook to get the ball up with the wind blowing out. And different hitting coaches have different ideas of how to approach a sinker baller like Aaron Cook. One of the best words of advice I ever had was to carry your hands just a little bit lower. Wherever you normally set as you wait for that pitcher to deliver the ball, drop your hands just a little bit. The idea being that rather than hit the top half of the ball, you'll hit the middle or the bottom and hopefully get some elevation. But more than anything else, it's just the mental approach, knowing that that ball is going to have a lot of late movement down. You want to make sure to make him get pitches up in the strike zone. So even after the ball does sink, it's still a very hittable pitch. Of course, Aaron Cook has to cooperate with that, and so far this year he hasn't done much of it. Lee comes in with 13 home runs, the latest of which came last night. <laughs> National League leaders Chase Utley and Lance Berkman each with 17. Carlos Quentin leads the American League with 14. Josh Hamilton's right behind him. Josh Hamilton right now is in a triple crown race. It's still very early. But the Texas outfielders fourth in the American League in batting average, second in home runs, and first in RBIs. And having said that, the guy uh, he was traded for, Edinson Volquez with the Reds, is leading the NL in ERA. That's off Cook. And Lee is on with a base hit. As you might expect Aaron Cook is a pretty good fielder and most sinker ballers are because they know they're going to get a lot of balls hit back at him over the course of a game and that time Cook could only deflect that ball no play for the shortstop Quintanilla. 
Here's Soto hitting in the cleanup position for the second time in his career. He did it last year once and went three for four with two doubles and an RBI. He's there because Ramirez is getting the day off. And before the ball game, Gio received the Gillette Rookie of the Month Award for April in the National League. Congratulations. Big first month. I don't think anybody could have predicted the kind of month Giovanni Soto had. He really stepped forward. Well, they definitely knew the possibility was there that he could be a force offensively as well as behind the plate, but I don't think anybody could have predicted how good he was in the first month of the season. Cook set. Short lead by Derek. And it's a little bit inside. Now the Menards big lumber stat. Only Joey Votto with more home runs. And how many against the Cubs? Four, I think. Three in one game. Three in one game, yeah. Gonna need some help from his teammates. He wants to win that rookie home run race. Hit hard, and Herrera is there to make the catch. And that ends the inning. Two out single, no runs. We played one. Rockies four, Cubs nothing. Ted Lilly hoping to settle in after giving up four runs on five hits in the opening inning. He'll start against the pitcher, Aaron Cook. He's hitting 227 with two RBIs. I just looked up Joey Votto's numbers. I was off by one. He's hit five of his ten home runs. Half of them have been against the Cubs in just six games. 11 of his 29 RBIs have come against the Cubs. And he's been a lot better this year, actually, against left handed pitchers. One and two on Aaron Cook. Started 22 minutes late because of rain. At the moment, it's a beautiful Friday afternoon. Sedano goes out the shallow left and makes the catch in front of Soriano. Back to the top and Tavares. Uh, saw Mike earlier with the uh, rain gear outside. Those foam fingers uh, help out with the rain. Absorb it. Yeah. Before you sit down, you'd lay that foam finger there. It sucks up all the water. Then you can sit on a dry seat. <laughs> Corner man in against Tavares. A big swing and a miss. Struck him out. Two quick outs. It's the first strikeout for Ted. Back to back change ups. Just Tavares well out in front. You know, he's better off making him swing the bat, even though I mentioned he has 13 infield hits. You've got to take that bun away from him and force him to swing the bat. Herrera really had, aside from the three run homer by Helton, the key at bat in the first inning. Worked a deep count and was able to single into right center. That moved Tavares all the way to third base. Lilly would get the next two before the Helton home run. Lilly wanted a fastball in. The 1 2 pitch is off the inside corner. Well, best wishes for a speedy recovery to Robert Salinas at Munster Community Hospital recovering from back surgery, a lifelong Cubs fan. And Robert refused to let the nurses work with him the other night until the Cub game ended. Show them who's boss. That was the extra innings game, and the Cubs won. 
Get well soon, Robbie. And let the nurses work with you, please, while you watch. <laughs> the nurses are your friend. Two from Lilly, a fly ball to right. Koske goes back a little bit, and he has it. Much better second for Lilly than he had in the first when he really labored. Four to nothing, Rockies early on. It includes a t shirt, a photograph, baseball, and lunch. To purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com or call 773 404 CUBS. One ball, no strikes on Kosuke Fukudome. Make it one and one. Well, interesting, Lou was talking about his starting pitchers and how they've kept the team in games throughout here lately. And the Cubs continue their stretch of having leads. They have led in 20 straight games. This is Herrera. And today, if they can find a way to grab the lead, score a bunch of runs, it would be the first 21 game streak of this kind since 1935 when they had a 21 game winning streak. They went 21 and 0 during a stretch in September. But the note about the starters is the Cubs really haven't had one of those two and a third, one and two thirds, seven runs, really since. The last time they didn't lead, and that was John Lieber's start in Cincinnati. So if Ted Lilly can find a way to gut through six innings, that will really help. You're able to save the bullpen and again give your team an opportunity to come back. Now those short outings by your starting pitchers, especially coming on the heels of a lot of innings thrown by your relievers, even if it's just the last two or three innings of a ball game on multiple days. You have a short outing by your starting pitcher and have to get into that bullpen early. That can uh, cause you to make roster moves the day after. One and one on Edmonds. Talked about him in the open. Seven for 13 with a double and two home runs against Aaron Cook. He has to work now. He's down one and two. Okay, Aaron Cook now knows what he wants to throw. Kept waiting for Ionetta to give him the right sign. A rare straight changeup. That's a pitch that Cook uses on occasion to a left-handed hitter on very rare occasions. He's basically a two-pitch pitcher, and when you have the kind of movement he has on his sinker, that's all you really need. Two-two slider. And Helton will pick it up. A little flip to Cook for the out. Now DeRosa with two gone. Okay, not as easy a play as you might think. That slow roller to the first base side. It's such a short toss for Todd Helton. He goes with a little backhanded flip, and Cook gets there just ahead of Jim Edmonds. Those first bases would much rather have a long toss where you could run at your target, give him a full arm swing, and show him the ball. That time, just a little backhanded flip. This is basically Aramis Ramirez's first normal day off. He did miss three starts in late April, early May, but it was because he got hit on the left wrist by a pitch in St. Louis. He gets a rest, and that ball is dropped by Baker. And DeRosa's at second base with two outs. It's an error on Baker. The wind really pushing that ball as the flags are blowing straight out to center. The sun may have been a bit of an issue. Whatever happened, the Cubs have a runner at second, and the inning is still alive. He just gets too far underneath that fly ball, has to change his direction right at the very end, tries to go straight back toward the warning track and make that 
overhead catch, but the ball hits him in the heel of the glove, actually on the little finger of the glove, and drops onto the warning track. Make it hurt. Now Ronnie Cedeno playing short. As you mentioned, uh, Lou taking the opportunity to give the left side of his infield a rest. Terrio and Ramirez with Olfers against Cook as Cedeno grounds out. Cubs cannot take advantage of the two out error and we've played two. It's still four to nothing Rockies. The strike to Spielborgs as we begin the third. He doesn't need the umbrella for the rain right now. Getting to the point where he might need it for the sun. Something to lean on. We all need somebody <laughs> to lean on. The two strike pitch. There's strike three. Ted has sent down five straight. Elevated fastball up and out over the plate to Ryan Spielboards. Was Ted Lilly a favor chasing a pitch well out of the zone there on the two strike count? A strike on Atkins, who is now 0 for 6 in the series. High in the air to left. Soriano went in. Now he has to go back. And Jim Edmonds couldn't make the basket catch. Right at the last second, Soriano looked at Edmonds and he couldn't put it away. And it'll be an error on Edmonds. So a miscommunication out there in left center. And we've seen a couple balls get down as Baker dropped one in right. And now the Cubs with an error. I see Soriano looking towards Edmonds. Edmonds was looking towards Soriano before he came into your picture. I don't think either guy had a real good beat on it. Yeah, it was an I got it, you take it. They yeah. both looked at one another before Edmonds got a glove on. strike doesn't look like we've seen that that was a breaking ball but a really good fastball from Ted yeah, his fastball has been sitting in the mid 80s today I don't know whether it's by design uh, this Rockies team is a very good fastball hitting ball club maybe he just doesn't want to challenge with his best heater a catch by Edmonds two away with Atkins holding up at second Saving a little bit in reserve in case he really does need to rear back and throw a fastball. But his fastball's been in the mid 80s. His changeup has been in the low 70s, and he's mixed in just a few breaking balls here and there, especially that backdoor slider to the right-handed hitters. And that's uh, contrary to his last couple starts, where his fastball was up in the low 90s, consistently hitting 92-93. drive to the left not sure the ballpark's going to hold it here Soriano doesn't have room it's a home run so that error comes back to hurt Ted Lilly Ionetta with his fourth home run and it's six to nothing And for Ionetta, that's his second home run this year against the Cubs. Our Belvedere home run replay got under that ball, lifted it high in the air to left field. I mean, Ted Lilly, under perfect circumstances, is a fly ball pitcher, but when you have the wind blowing out 20 miles an hour, he really has to focus on hitting his spots with his pitches and try to keep the ball down a little more than usual. Lieber up for the second time. That 
one drilled in the left center. Baker with two doubles. But things were cruising along after that first inning. A one, two, three seconds. Struck out Spielborgs to start this inning and in the air in left center field. Just opened the floodgates here for the Rockies. This is not the best day to get down this much when you're facing the Rockies best starter Aaron Cook. It was about as opposite in style as you could possibly be from Ted Lilly a fly ball pitcher. Aaron Cook throws that sinker and gets lots of grounders. And I don't know how Aaron Cook feels about it but some sinker ballers will tell you that their ball moves more when the wind is blowing out. They actually prefer a day like this. Nothing in two on Quintanilla. We're excited to have three Blackhawks Hall of Famers and team ambassadors who will handle the stretch a little later. Stan Makita, Bobby Hall, Tony Esposito. Base hit. And the Rockies get their seventh run. Quintanilla with an RBI hit. It's a hard ground ball back through the box right through the wickets for Ted Lilly reached down tried to pick that ball on the short hop but got through his legs into center field and with two outs Baker was off on contact and scored easily. And all this now unearned because of the error earlier in the inning by Jim Edmonds his communication out at left center. Eight hits already for the Rockies. This is a season high and runs allowed for Lilly. Ted has a sign from the catcher Soto the kick and the pitch. Cook stays alive. This is the only matinee. Everything else is later tonight around baseball. Cubs are up by a game and a half in the division. Uh, St. Louis Cook takes a call third to end the inning. But the Rockies get some unearned runs. They now lead the Cubs seven to nothing. Lou was asked about, but the Cubs have avoided really up to this point over the last three plus weeks. Carlos Zambrano will bat for Ted Lilly. He never did get a plate appearance. He gave up seven runs, four earned. They were all unearned at the top of this inning as Carlos broke his bat. Sawed off by Aaron Cook. Carlos is used to doing that to uh, to hitters, not having it happen to him at the plate. Soriano bounces foul. <laughs> Sinker just stayed inside there, didn't really tail back over the inside part of the plate, got right in on Carlos' fist, broke his bat, hits that easy ground to the right side.
Well, you sit here and you try to tell yourself, make him get it up. And the one time the Cubs have hit the ball to the outfield, they've gotten the base runner as the error was committed by Baker. Soriano strikes out. But that's easier said than done. One, two, three, four, five, six ground ball outs the first time through the order. And on the season coming into today, it had 110 outs via the ground out, only 35 by fly out. We'll see John Lieber in the fourth. Billboards comes in and calls off Quintanilla. That was a seven pitch third inning for Aaron Cook. All Rockies early on today, seven zip. Let's get today's Athlon trivia question. What is the Cubs' record for most come from behind wins in a single season? The answer coming up in the bottom of the inning. John Lieber's now working on the mound facing Willie Tavares. Cubs have 15 come from behind wins. They are third in the National League in that department. The Astros have 17. The Phillies with 16. Cubs had 32 comeback victories in 2007. Two to the count. Got an email the other day when we asked about the uh, the Aflac duck. Whether it was a, a Canada goose. Dan English from Genoa City, Wisconsin, said, "Lend the answer to your Aflac question about a duck or Canadian or Canada goose. It is a duck. The Canadian or Canada goose is black, white, and gray. So there's your answer." As Koske gathers it in. Genoa City, Wisconsin. That's where the young and the restless is based. Oh, yeah. Is that a real city? Now we're going to throw out another question. Uh, Dan says he's never seen a white Canadian goose before, and he has goose hunted for 20 years. Well, he should know. He's an authority. That's right. We saw John Lieber's numbers when he came into the ball game. ERA of 333 on the season. However, as a reliever, in 14 relief outings, his ERA is only 180. He's done a really nice job out of the bullpen. He had that one start against the Reds when he got blown up for five runs on seven hits. But when pitching out of the bullpen, he's done a really nice job. Genoa City is in Walworth County. In Wisconsin. Herrera trying to beat it out, and he cannot. Nice throw by Cedeno to get him, barely. Well, Victor Newman runs Genoa City. He's the man. A nice slider down and in, right off the fist of Herrera. A little cue shot out there to Ronnie Cedeno, who makes a nice play on the run right there to get the out. Another very close play at first base. Genoa City is right on the Wisconsin Illinois border. A little scary, you know, so much about the soaps. Just that one in particular, yeah, Young and the Restless. That's the right? only one I watch. I mean, you know, it started uh, back in my playing days. Uh, back in the day, we played almost all night games. So you know, get up in the morning and flip on the tube and watch the Young and the Restless. Isn't that the one where the Brewers players were on last yeah. year? Oh man, Ryan Spielborgs just hit it to the back of the bleachers. <laughs> It's eight to nothing. That's their third home run today. Ah, 
Not a very forgiving afternoon. A cement mixer slider right in the middle of the plate. Our Belvedere home run replay, the fourth of the season for Ryan Spielborg. Is a no doubter to the back of the bleachers in left center field. This is one of those days where you just never know. We heard so much about the weather going into today. Thought it might rain all afternoon. It's been very sunny, very few clouds to be found at the moment. You had the best team in baseball against a team with one of the worst records, in fact, tied for the worst record in baseball, and yet the Rockies lead the Cubs eight to nothing after three and a half. Time for the Coors Light freeze cam. We go back to last night. Big play in the uh, seventh inning as Derek Lee hit the tapper. Matt Hurgis with a runner, Soriano holding it third. And the ball ended up hitting Lee and then deflecting off Todd Helton. And that allowed Soriano to score the tying run. Cubs would take the lead on a sacrifice fly by Giovanni Soto. It's a Coors Light freeze cam. Much different story today. Eight to nothing. And Aaron Cook has been in cruise control through the first three innings. The only hit he allowed was the infield single off his glove, hit by Derek Lee. Aaron Cook in uh, August of 04 was diagnosed with blood clots in both lungs. Ended up having a couple of surgeries. Had a rib removed to help alleviate the problem. Was the 2005 Tony Canigliaro Award winner given to the player who overcomes adversity through the attributes of spirit, determination, and courage. Derek is two out of two. Makes the big turn at first base. He's not going to chance it with his team down eight. Let's get the answer to today's Aflac trivia question. What is the record for the Cubs for most come from behind wins in a single season? Aflac! 49. In 1929 and again in 1998. Driven the other way by Soto. And caught right in front of the 368 by Baker. Similar approach to the swing that produced the sacrifice fly to right field in the ball game last night drove it with authority out there to right field but Baker able to corral it on the warning track Kosuke bats with one out Derek still at first we mentioned the blood clot issue for Aaron Cook a few years ago well tomorrow afternoon Glendon Rush will be back at Wrigley Field but this time in a Rockies uniform he is expected to be brought up from Triple A Colorado Springs and make the start. Line foul back in 2006, September of that year. Glendon suffered a blood clot in one of his lungs, ended his season, and at the time, many thought his career might be over as well. The Cubs would eventually release him in the January of 07. He did not play last year. Glendon. Began this season with the San Diego Padres. And that 
after getting released. He hooked down with the Rockies Triple A club, and he'll be back in the bigs tomorrow. So a great comeback story for one of the good guys in this game. Yes, indeed. We wish him all the luck in the world after tomorrow. That's right. A one two to Koske just off the outside corner. Ionetta held on to it a little bit longer to give Paul Nart an extra look. Full now three and two. Boy, the unfortunate thing about falling behind so early in this ball game, it really kind of takes the running game completely out of the equation. Cook can be slow to home plate, and Chris Ionetta has only thrown out one of 16 attempted base stealers this year. But uh, you don't figure to be taking any chances on the bases trailing by eight runs. There's ball four, bringing up Edmonds with two on. Menards grounds crew dragging the infield dirt. That's a lot more fun than rolling out the tarp. Well, they've done a great job with this field on the few occasions we've had uh, to deal with rain before and during ball games. This field has played tremendously this season. Base hit in the center by Edmonds. And they're loaded with one out. Well, you can get a big chunk of those eight runs back right here in the fourth inning. Just keep the line moving. Jim Edmonds with an inside out swing on a sinker, lines it into center field. Derek Lee had to hold up momentarily on that line drive to make sure it got through into the outfield. Cubs have them loaded for Mark DeRosa. As you would imagine with an eight run lead the Rockies are going to play back for an out. This goes back to our conversation earlier this week about how you position your infield with uh, a runner at third and less than two outs and you know, a force at every base in this spot and they just want to avoid a big inning. Trying to turn a double play to get out of it. There are your runners two singles and a walk in the inning Lee. Fukudome and Edmonds, third to first, respectively. And now Michael Wirtz is going to jump on the mound in the bullpen in case Lieber's spot comes up in this inning. Baker was almost standing on a warning track as he came in to make the catch. Throw goes to the plate. Derek scores. It's eight to one. Jeff Baker was playing about as deep as you could possibly play in this ballpark. I was just about to point that out before the pitch. Uh, DeRosa hit the fly ball to right center field that Baker misplayed a couple of innings ago. This time he figured if you're going to hit one over my head, it's going to land in the bleachers. He had literally had his heels on the warning track out there in right field. DeRosa knocks in his 27th. Also on the play. Koske moved to third. So Daniel gets on. Lou will have to use another reliever in the fifth. Cubs were on the road in interleague play. Lou would not have this issue. Now we've talked many times about the different styles, American League versus National League, and I think we both prefer this way. A little more pure, I guess. A little more strategy involved. Not that an American League manager couldn't come to the National League and do a fine job of game management, but you really don't have many decisions to make with your pitcher in that American League. 
Helton went down to get it. I don't know if they gave him the catch or not, but he stepped on first base just for good measure. The Cubs do get one. They trail eight to one after four. So John Lieber will get at least one more inning here. And you think a little bit differently about your pitcher batting when there are runners on base versus nobody on. So it's possible John could lead off the bottom of the fifth. We'll see. Todd Helton made a nice defensive play to end the fourth. I'm going to call it a three unassisted. And he flies out to Jim Edmonds. So one away, Chris Iannetta has doubled and hit a two run homer. He has scored both times. You know, Len, we talked at length last night how dinged up the Rockies are, missing so many key people in their lineup, both offensively and defensively. But it doesn't really matter to these guys that are in the lineup today. They, they don't expect any sympathy. I, I mentioned it last night. Uh, for some of these guys, this is an opportunity. Every adversity creates opportunity for somebody else. And these guys that are in Clint Hurdle's lineup today are just trying to do everything they can to take full advantage of the at bats they're going to get while the Rocky star players are on the disabled list. And again, you knew it was a matter of time before they put a hurting on somebody. And they've done that today against Lilly and Lieber. John gave up a solo home run to Spillboards in the fourth after Lilly yielded seven runs. Four were earned in his short start, just three innings. Swing and a miss, strike three. And on paper, this looked to be their best chance in this series with Aaron Cook on the mound, a guy who hasn't really needed a lot of run support. They've given him eight runs. Well, there's something to be said for that psychological effect when you know you're sending your ace to the mound on a given day. And they, as you said, you figure just a couple of runs. Uh, Aaron Cook might be able to make it stand up but they really unleashed that offense early in this game and they've given him a seven run cushion. A lot of baseball left to play. A one one pitch hit foul by Baker. Noon Central start tomorrow, and Ryan Dempster again expected to face left hander Glendon Rush for the Rockies. And we'll have it for you right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Sunday's probables Ubaldo Jimenez and Sean Gallagher. And then it's off to Southern California. Three in San Diego, four in Los Angeles. Lieber wanted that one, didn't get it. Two and two. When normally this would be the kind of day that would be conducive to a raging comeback late by the Cubs with that wind blowing out, but. I think you're going to have to get Aaron Cook out of the ball game in order to get the fly balls necessary to hit those home runs. I mean, Cook had surrendered five home runs in 76 and two thirds innings coming into play today, but as we've seen through the first four innings of this game, he's got that sinker going. He's keeping it down in the zone. Tough to get that pitch in the air. And he's made just 53 pitches through four innings. So he's been pretty efficient. They might shorten him up a little bit with the big lead and coming off the complete game performance. Three two on the way. That's drilled deep to left center field. Bangs off the wall. Edmonds will throw it to second base but. Baker stands there with his third double. He's three for three with three doubles.
Couple of borderline pitches didn't go John Lieber's way earlier in the sequence. You get into a predictable count. Baker gets a sinker down the heart of the plate and bangs it off the wall out there in left center. I gotta tell you, uh, you're gonna take some lumps. But this uh, feels very unfamiliar, doesn't it? It really does. It's been a long time since the Cubs have been in a game like this. They got blasted at Cincinnati in a game started by Lieber on May 7th, 9 to nothing. But the Cubs haven't really been in a game like this since. I guess that's a good sign that this feels weird. Last thing you want is to have it feel very familiar. Hey, you don't want to say, here we go again. The 0 1 to Quintanilla is outside. Well, let's look at the Cubs' losses since May 7. 4 3, 7 6, 4 2, 5 3, and the last two in extras by a run. So they've all been very close. Up Ronnie on the one hopper, sending Baker around to score. It'll be a single and an RBI for Quintanilla. Even though it's called a single, it's uh, one of the concerns. You know, defense is not supposed to slump like offense, and uh, the Cubs haven't been very consistent the last couple of days defensively. Now, fortunately, recently they've been able to out hit their mistakes defensively, but you just don't want to get in the habit of having to constantly come back after making defensive mistakes and allowing unearned runs to score and then put that kind of pressure on your offense. As good as they've been this year, you can't expect the offense to go out and put up big numbers every time out. Didn't mean to. Fontenot will get out there and make the catch as Cook is out. The Rockies add another run. They have now scored in four of the first five innings, and they lead nine to one. Well, Gail, it's simply been all Rockies early on. The Rockies have lost nine straight on the road, but they have a big 9 1 lead. As you said, the wind blowing out is still fairly early. Big problem is Aaron Cook has been really good. Well, Aaron Cook's been a big problem for hitters around the National League all season long this year. Uh, we've talked about that sinker ball in the early going. He gets about two and a half ground ball outs for every fly ball out. Just have to find a way to get some counts in your favor and hope he make a mistake. You also want to save your bullpen, and that's why John Lieber is leading off. The 1 0 pitch to Lieber. The bats left handed, strike one. One and two. A well, big day for Lane Tech High School. Just up the uh, street on Addison. About a thousand students and staff on hand today to commemorate the centennial celebration of Lane Tech. The parade to Wrigley as Lieber strikes out. Founded in 1908, it was an all boys manual training school. Largest high school in the city, the average student population, 4,200. Girls were first admitted to Lane in 1971. Bill Cavaretta, the great Cub, went to Lane Tech. So great to have them here in the Lane Alumni Association, the largest in the nation with 10,000 members. They went co ed in what year? 71? 71. I bet the boys' grade point average went way down at 72. There's a base hit for Soriano. What a distraction. Well, yeah, I guess uh, the boys. They protested it in 1971. They were worried that the academic and athletic reputation would be brought down, but I think that happened. Well, the city championships in 07 and 08, girls softball, boys softball. 
Well, that might have been boys baseball. It says softball. Girls swim, boys swim, girls track, boys track, wrestling, and girls bowling. Outstanding. There's a strike on Mike Fontenot. Foul tip strike two. Well, that's the one you want to go after. Cook got a sinker up and out over the plate. Mike tried to line it into left field right there. Even though he didn't come up with it, that's good plate discipline to get a pitch up. Try to do some damage when he makes a mistake high in the strike zone. And that hit him. We mentioned on our scouting report for Aaron Cook at the beginning of the show, he does have some trouble pitching into left handers. That sinker usually comes back toward the inside corner, but you've got to start it so far in off the plate to get a strike with it. Occasionally he'll plunk a batter. Occasionally he'll leave that pitch too far inside. A lot of sinker ball pitches at some point in their career come up with a cut fastball to complement that sinking fastball that goes away from a lefty. The cutter goes into a lefty. The pitch to the lead. On one bounce, it's Herrera to Quintanilla to Helton, and that's the inning. 4 6 3 on the double play. Cubs had two on with one out, but cannot get a run in. 9 1. Discuss the day's hottest sports topics as Willie Tavares grounds to Ronnie Cedeno. The throws caught by Michael Hoffpower, who's now playing first base. And he'll lead off the bottom of the sixth inning, batting fourth. Henry Blanco now catching for Soto and inserted into the three spot, vacated by Derek Lee. So, Tribune Live will get you set for the Sox and Rays in Tampa. 5 30 right here on Comcast Sportsnet. David Kaplan was uh, in the booth here before the game with former Cub Todd Hollinsworth, who is going to be a guest tonight. Good to see Todd, who is the brother in law of Matt Hurgis. And the Todd and his wife Marcy and their family, they still make their home in this Chicago area. Driven to deep right. And Fukudome had to get just past him. Herrera is going to try for a triple. Relay throw by Fontenot, and he's in. First career triple for Herrera. Second Rockies second baseman in as many days to pick up his first career triple. It was Ian Stewart last night. It's about halfway up the wall out there in right center field. The carom did get past Fukudome. Jim Edmonds was right there to back it up, but Herrera with good speed ends up with his first triple. Spielborg's bounces. Herrera's going to hold up as DeRosa throws on to first. So Spielborg's retired, and now Garrett Atkins. We got a nice note from Larry Winry from Huntington, Indiana, the family of John Zaccanini, was here at Wrigley Field, I think, yesterday. In memory, uh, John's birthday to celebrate his life. He was a lifelong Cubs fan, lost his life last December in an auto accident in McHenry County. But, uh, thanks for the nice note, Larry Windry. Atkins grounds out. The Rockies do not score, but they have a big lead, 9 to 1. Baseball bat courtesy of Jewel and Kellogg. Called strike on Micah Hoffpower. Well, if Lou was considering giving Derek the day off Sunday, he's going to give him a half day off here with a team down eight. 
I don't know if this really counts. But any chance you can get to give your everyday players a few innings off and to give Hawk Power a couple of swings. That ball's deep, and it could go in the Ivy, I think, and it's not going to come out. Hawk Power should just keep running. He is. Might as well circle them all. And it'll be a double. Well, that's too bad. With a couple of inches, and that ball gets up into the basket as it was. It looked like it tucked into the ivy right at the base of the basket. It's in there somewhere. Yep, it clearly hits in the ivy just underneath the basket. One more look at it here. The fans reaching out in anticipation of Micah Hoffpower hitting a home run, but unfortunately, a double. Brian O'Nora, the second base umpire, got out there to basically realize that the ball was lost. So Micah coming up just short in his bid for career homer number one. And he continues to swing the hot bat. That gives him six hits in 13 at bats this season. Some of those as a pinch hitter off the bench. Getting an opportunity to mop up here for Derek Lee at first base today. And even if the Cubs don't come back today, every hit Michael Hawkpower gets. Keeps those wheels spinning in Lou Pinella's head, trying to figure out a way to get him into the lineup. Well, and that's really all you can control if you're Micah Hoffbauer. Just take advantage of every at bat you get, every opportunity to set foot on that field as a defender or as a hitter, and make that decision for the manager extremely hard. To left and deep, Spillboards is over. Home run! Koske has left the yard. He's gone oppo to make it 9-3. Third home run, they've all been here at Wrigley. And if I recall, the first one was pulled, the second one was out to center, and this one to left. Belvedere home run replay. Fukudome down and through that ball. You can see by that bat toss, he knew he hit it pretty good. Got it up in the air. The wind helped ride it out of here. A couple of rows up into the bleachers in left field. You're going to need a new beverage, sir. Even if Lou empties his bench, and he won't empty the bench today because two starters were already getting the day off. Ramirez and Terrio. Probably the only other guy we would see would be Reed Johnson, unless the Cubs get close, and he still has Ramirez and uh, Terrio in his back pocket to use if needed. It looks like the Rockies are in command today, but I'll tell you one thing, in the Cubs dugout, they still think they can come back, and there's a lot of confidence right now. Terry are putting on the batting gloves. Well, the best offensive inning this year for the Cubs has been the eighth inning. They've scored 41 runs in the eighth inning of ball games this year. 39 in the seventh, so... Well, this is a ball club that justifiably feels like they're never out of a ball game. And when you've won 23 of 31 at home, you feel pretty invincible. Tavares goes back, still going back. This ball carrying, gone! Wow! 
That looked like a lazy fly ball to center field. It just kept going. Edmonds made Cook get it up, up into the wind, and it's now 9-4. to four. And Jim Edmonds with his first home run as a member of the Chicago Cubs. Fans were booing his first out in the second, but they're on their feet now. Do you think that was gone off the bat? Well, I've seen Jim Edmonds hit enough high pitches just like this one. A very casual swing, but he got it high in the air, got good extension through the ball. Tremendous carry to straightaway center field. Right in front of the batter's eye lounge out in center. So they've gone back to back. This game feels a little different right now, doesn't it? Still five down. And while Lou took out Soto and Lee, it's to the shortstop, Quintanilla. And that's only the first out. Remember what Hawk Power did? He started the inning with a double. to believe this is one of those wait and see at bats right here should Ronnie Cedeno happen to reach base we might see a pinch hitter for John Lieber we saw Reed Johnson getting a bat and a helmet if Ronnie would happen to make out with two outs and nobody on I would imagine Lieber would then at that point go ahead and take the at bat and go back out to the mound to start the next inning. Cubs fan from Lansing, Illinois, Bailey Wesolowski here today. Wrote on the note, please let Bailey's daddy know she made it to the game. So there you go, Bailey's dad. Charged by Quintanilla. And with the second out of the inning and nobody on base, John Lever will indeed take the at bat here. Michael Wirtz will have a seat down in that Cubs bullpen. This is one of those games where if you were in September, you could manage it completely differently. Yeah, you'd have a full complement of bench players and a full complement of relief pitchers down in that bullpen because of the September call-ups. Seen a pitcher pinch hit for a pitcher and now a reliever get two at bats. Zambrano batted for Lilly in the third and now Lieber with his second plate appearance after striking out in the fifth. He's two and two against Cook here. Called strike three. And that ends the inning. And the Cubs finally giving their fans something to really get into. Koske with a two run homer and then Jim Edmonds leaving the yard for the first time as a member of the Cubs 9 4 after six. Well, pre game coverage starting at 1130. And Bob and I will be with you at straight up noon. Todd Helton swings at the first pitch and pops it up on the right side. Mike Fontenot out in the grass one out. Big inning right here for John Lieber and the Cubs. Get back in that dugout quickly after scoring three runs in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Try to take advantage of that little bit of momentum. Get your team back up to the plate, swinging those bats as quickly as possible. Got a couple of interesting emails I'd like to get to here if we get an opportunity. Again, Stan Makita, Bobby Hall, and Tony Esposito. Hall of Famers and team ambassadors from the Blackhawks will sing the stretch. 
Greg from Heron Illinois wants us to explain how the infield fly rule works and what's the reason for the rule. I don't know when it was implemented. But if you think about the infield fly rule it would be runners at first and second or the bases loaded. And a pop up on the infield. Now the runners can't go anywhere. Because you are assuming the ball is going to be caught. If they didn't have the infield fly rule it would be very easy to turn a double play. You just let the ball drop and then you force the runners who can't really leave their base. So I'm sure that happened a few times before they decided you know what we have to change this rule on a ball that's an obvious catch. And, and I think that's why that rule exists. And only if a fair ball. Correct. Not on a ball in foul territory. The umpire uh, on the field of play you'll hear them call it. They raise their hand in the air to indicate an infield fly. And then they will verbally say infield fly rule if fair. Well according to Wikipedia. It was implemented in 1895. But a good question. And I still contend that there are certain base runners uh, in both leagues. That don't know what they're supposed to do on an infield fly rule and if the infielder happens to let the ball drop I think you could still get some easy outs. I mean the batter is automatically out on an infield fly rule. So the infielder could conceivably let the ball drop knowing the batter's already been called out because of the infield fly rule and then try to catch an unaware base runner trying to advance to the next base. That's a foul out. Ionetta popping out to Hoff power. Bob, we are in the presence of greatness. Indeed. Indeed. Stan Bakita and Tony Esposito. And now the Golden Jet, Bobby Hall. <laughs> Kosuke back to the warning track. And it just hits the bottom of the wall. Baker will end up with his fourth double, four at bats. And four doubles for Jeff Baker. And I'm guessing he just tied a major league record. That'd be a pretty good guess. Boy, this one, a high fly ball gets over Kosuke's head, hits right off the base of the wall out there in right field. Four in a row. That'll be it for John Lieber's Scott Ayer. As the Heineken call to the pen has been made, will come in on his 36th birthday. 9 4 Rockies will be back. Well, it's a, a franchise record for the Rockies four doubles for Jeff Baker. And happy birthday to Scott Ayer, turning 36 here on May 30th. Scott Ayer pitching in his eighth ball game has yet to surrender a run this year. As a matter of fact, you go back over his last 26 outings, going back to last August 16th, he's not allowed a run. And happy birthday to Bobby Hall's wife, Deborah. Right, Bobby? That's right. All right. Oh, Debo, it's her, it's her birthday today. <laughs> She's a lot younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> One strike on Quintanilla. Kick and the pitch is away. One and one. Bobby could do play by play here. <laughs> the one one pitch. Low and outside on a slider from air. I like to hear his home run call. He shoots, he scores! <laughs> As Lloyd Pettit used to say, a shot and a goal. Two and two on Quintanilla. Jeff Baker's at second base after his fourth double of the contest. Just missed. Oh. 
Swing and a miss. Time for the stretch. Today's guest conductors for Take Me On to the Ball Game, please welcome Blackhawks legends Bobby Hall, Stan Makita, and Tony Esposito. All right, all you Cubs fans, let's hear ya. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ball Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if we ever get back. And it's no good for the pub. One, two, three strikes are out at the old ball. <laughs> three strikes are out at the old ball. Against Alfonso Soriano, it's 9-4 Rockies. The Golden Jets with us, Bobby Hall. See, you're still too fast. <laughs> you and Stan I'm... are too fast, and uh, Tony's too quick. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you uh, did a nice job. We, we at least came here to see the Cubs win, and they're not out of it yet, but we brought them a little bad luck early in the game. Well, they're coming back here in the late innings. That's... Uh, been a good thing for the Cubs lately and let's hope they can keep it keep it going after scoring three times in the sixth they've, they've come behind on uh, quite a few other games of recent here's the pitch by Cook and that line drive is caught by Omar Quintanilla so let's go back to the day as we show some old footage uh -oh. what do you think about when you see these uh, old highlights would love to be able to get out there and do it again those days are over. It's a young man's game. And we'll have to let the bread holes in the group. And the, <laughs> and the Jonathans and the Patricks and all that group do the job now. I want to ask you about Brett. How has he enjoyed uh, being a coach general manager? When he quit, I knew that he wanted to stay involved with the game. But I had no idea that he was going to get involved so quickly uh, he was a great student of the game and I knew that he wanted to be a part of putting a team together and it's just too bad that Dallas hadn't uh, signed him just be when, when he went to uh, Phoenix or, or he'd have played another couple of years no doubt being in his hometown they did a wonderful job uh, I know they likely would have enjoyed being in the finals against Detroit, but uh, uh, or against uh, the Penguins, Pitts Pittsburgh, I should say, but it just wasn't to be. Um, they played well in some games and then were quite flat in other games. There's a base hit by Fonten on the left. Let's talk about the Chicago Blackhawks. You and Stan and Tony and all the Blackhawks greats have been welcomed back into the organization with open arms uh, nights for all of you this year sold out crowds uh, rocky words john mcdonough jay blunk have done just a wonderful job uh, with the organization and some very exciting young players well you guys trained all those guys here before the blackhawks got we did trained you, them right <laughs> remind john and jay of that <laughs> I, I will do that and uh, it's 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 fabulous uh, a lot of people don't get one chance in life I got a chance to come to Chicago back in 57 and not knowing what a wonderful town I was coming to and uh, played for 15 years in the greatest city in the world in front of all the greatest fans in the world. And uh, uh, then for, for one reason or another, I had to leave the city and, and uh, 35 years later, here I am back in town again and, and back with the Blackhawks. Uh, it's, it's just the greatest feeling in the world to be back with an organization that you started with and always thought you were going to uh, be involved with. The all-time goal-scoring leader, 
Blackhawks history of 604. Henry Blanco's just hit it out. I think that's gone. <laughs> Nine to six. They're only down three. Hey, all you need is two guys on and another homer. Come on, you cubbies. Lay the hickory to that old horse hide. <laughs> <laughs> That's the third home run the last two innings for the Cubs. Isn't that great? That's what people like to see. They like to see goals being scored. They like to see home runs being shot out of the park. Henry Blanco with our most recent Belvedere home run replay. He got every bit of that one. His first home run of the season. Oh, we oh, brought someone luck Ooh, anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> They're back in it now. The Cubs are down only three. Michael Hoffpower with a base hit. Get through him. Nice play by Tavares to cut it off and keep Hoffpower to a single. There's some action in the Rockies bullpen, and Clint Hurdle's going to walk out toward the mound. I hope my wife is watching this game down in Florida. She allowed me to come up here uh, to be to be with you folks today and to be able to sing the. Uh, take me out to the ball game too quickly but <laughs> it's it's my wife Deborah's birthday today and uh, I'd like to wish her and I was trying to get all 40,000 here <laughs> to wish her a happy birthday but I know that uh, uh, she knows I tried and she knows that uh, that I'm in love with her and wish her all uh, the best and, and uh, very happy returns in the day. All right, hang with us here, Bobby. We'll be back. Heineken call to the pin. 9-6, Rockies. Kosuke Fukudome now against Manny Corpus, runner on. Henry Blanco hit a two-run homer. Any good comeback stories from uh, your playing days in hockey? Oh, God, we, we had so many great games. Uh, one sticks out in my mind, 1967. Uh, we were neck and neck with the New York Rangers and uh, first period's over and it's three to nothing New York Billy Ray came in and the steam was coming up from under his collar and his uh, face was as red as that red hat he wore and uh, he said Stan referring to Mr. Makita Stan I want you to go with Chico and Bobby and he said and I mean for you to go with Chico and Bobby Three, two shifts later, I had two and Stan had one, and we were back tied. <laughs> and we came back and we beat him after that. Tied the score in two shifts, and, uh, and then came on and beat him. Momentum can change quickly, can it? Oh, and look at well, look at what's happening right here in your game. Three in the sixth, two more here in the seventh. And called strike to make it two and two. Now, what was the worst? The worst lead in hockey was three, right? Because it wasn't quite enough to be a blowout. And if you got then it was 3-1, the momentum could change. That's what the cliche was, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. I, uh, three, three goals were never uh, unsurmountable. And uh, with, with kind of... That'll be a base hit. And the tying oh, run will come to the plate. Oh, oh. Come on, you cubbies. Just saw Ram... Uh, Ron Sano in the other room looks great. I bet he's here every game, every home game. Yeah, Ron uh, has had a lot of fun this year, Bobby. This is a great ball club. And uh, if you spend a lot of time around Ron, you know that his mood really is dictated by the team. I mean, if the team wins, he's happy. If the team loses, he's not. I can understand that. I remember he, he was of the same era that we were. And, we remember all those great Cubby teams back then with uh, Beckert and, and Sandberg and Billy Williams and uh, Randy Huntley and uh, Ernie Banks. Ernie Mr. Banks. Cubs. Oh, God. They were, they, were the, they were the great times in Chicago. Edmund skies this one down along the left field line. It's going to slice out of play. 9 6. Another great Canadian played on that team, Fergie Jenkins. That's right. From Chatham, Ontario. <laughs> we had uh, Fergie in the booth earlier in this homestand. Yeah, just a few days ago, celebrating the anniversary of his 3,000th strikeout. Oh, my God. 3,000. 
Cubs at one time trailed this one eight to nothing and nine to one. They have scored the last five. And the tying run is at the plate. Inside on Edmonds. And it all started with that close call on the first batter at first base. Three home runs for the Cubs. The last two innings, three for the Rockies today. And there's a drive by Edmonds. Tavares won't the catch gap. it. That's in the gap. Cubs can here get two, two here. Hawk Power will score. Fukudome's in. <laughs> they love Edmonds now, 9 to 8. ball was out away from him and down he was able to get the bat around and hook it back to the gap in right center field and it was off to the races for Kosuke Fukudome got a great read on that ball and scored all the way from first base well when Willie Tavares can't catch up to it in center field you know it was hit well still only one out in the inning Here's the pitch to DeRosa. Outside corner strike. Well, you brought this team a lot of luck here in the seventh. <laughs> a lot of good luck. Even though it was a terrible take me out to the ball game sing, we got him going. <laughs> I just look at it this way, Bobby. You were able to sing the chorus on the back end twice. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. That might be a first. <laughs> I remember when Brett was playing in St. Louis, he always used to talk about Edmonds. He always enjoyed going to watch him play and watch him bat. He sure come through here in the late innings. One and one on DeRosa. Tying run is at second base. Well, Bobby, nothing is official, but there are a lot of reports out there that the Blackhawks might host a game against the Red Wings here at Wrigley Field. If that happens, that would be one of the great events of all time here would in Chicago. It, would it not? They've had one out in Edmonton. They had one in Buffalo. And they were all resounding successes. And I can just see a, a rink out here in the middle of this field. And it would be just one of those great, great moments in, in Chicago sports history. I, I can remember being up in this Right in this, these stands right here, watching the Chicago Bears beat the New York Giants for the championship in 1959. And let me tell you, it was cold enough that day to freeze ice without a machine. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't wear enough clothes. I know that was the day of a game, and every time I came to watch the Bears, I always scored no less than two goals and generally three because I was going so hard to get the frost out of my body. I'd freeze up here. Oh, when they pass that little flask around, oh, I was all for it. <laughs> the afternoon. <laughs> Just inside, DeRosa's still alive, three and two. Wind still howling straight out to center. That took a lot of those, uh, those fly balls early in the game out of the park. Ordinarily, they might have, might have stayed in. No question about it. Edmonds represents the tying run at second. It's three and two on DeRosa. Anywhere out of the infield. High fly ball by DeRosa. Deep left center field. <laughs> Cubs lead! <laughs> a two run homer for <laughs> DeRosa! How about that? <laughs> what a ball game! What a comeback, you Cubbies! <laughs> Now I don't feel so bad. <laughs> Bobby, they were down nine to one. Oh, I know that. And I was crying in my in my beard over there. <laughs> this is fantastic. This is a game that these 40,000 people will remember for a long time to come. As long as they keep ahead. <laughs> Came on a hanging split finger. 
DeRosa got out front, lifted it high in the air. Jim Edmonds and every fan in his <laughs> ballpark with their fists up over their head after that one. That pitcher needed that reaction. Whoa. So another pitching change. Heineken called to the pen. DeRosa gives the Cubs a 10 9 lead. And still only one out here in the seventh inning. We'll be Oof. back. Right hander Jason Grilly is in. Vanny Corpus did not record an out. He gave up a single to Fukudome, a two run double to Edmonds, and a go ahead two run homer to Mark DeRosa. It's 10 9 Cubs. Cedeno gets a sharp ground ball that's gloved by Quintanilla, and that's the second out. Not quite sure at that point. Thinks it might be gone, but finally gets that right fist up in the air. Look at the fan reaction in the background. Unbelievable. Cubs trailed seven to nothing against the Dodgers on September 12th of 06. They won 9-8 and 11. Today they trailed by eight. And now they lead 10 to nine. Jason Marquis, the second Cubs starting pitcher to be used as a pinch hitter. We're with the Golden Jet, Bobby Hall. This has I, been fun. Oh, it's been wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to stick around <laughs> uh, to see maybe there will be another seventh inning, and I'll sing the song a little better. <laughs> maybe we'll do the eighth inning stretch. There, today. let's do yeah. it. Or no, nine. <laughs> the ninth inning stretch. I've got a I've got a Cub hat here that I've signed. As soon as we get out of this inning, and that'll be about a half an hour from now, hopefully. I'm going to pitch it out there for the, all those great Cubby fans. That'll be a great item. Yeah. I'll bet there are a lot of them that are Blackhawk fans as well. Oh, what yeah. Say? Oh, yeah. You guys got an enormous hand when you were introduced. Swing and a miss. All right. Uh -oh. You're going to let it fly here as we I'm go to break? Fly. All right. There's the, the cap. Thanks to Bobby Hall. <laughs> And what an inning for the Cubs. Mark DeRosa with a go ahead two run blast. Thanks, Bobby. We appreciate the time. Guys, thank you very much, and I hope I brought a little bit of good luck. Absolutely. End those, of seven, 10 9 Cubs. Those Cubs are. Get that inning. The Cubs were able to come all the way back. They now lead 10 9, and Carlos Marmel's pitching. How about this turn of events? Scott Air came on and struck out Omar Quintanilla to win the Rocky seventh, and he has a chance on his birthday for a win. Found back by Scott Pesednik, who is pinch hitting for Grilly. How about that happen? Wow. I'll tell you, I was I saw the DeRosa fly ball to left center field as Pitsendik watches a called strike three go by. I thought it had a chance to get out of here. So rather than watch the flight of the ball or watch Mark DeRosa, I was just looking straight down the bleachers here on the third base side, and every fan in unison had both fists up over their head. Unbelievable. That's, that's a natural reaction for people to throw their hands up over their head when something good happens in a ball game. I love to see that. Now Seth Smith bats for Tavares. Slider strike. Crooked numbers. We were talking just a couple of innings ago how the Cubs have scored a lot of runs late in a ball game 39 in the seventh 41 in the eighth. They'll add to that total in the seventh inning. Oh two. Got him. Now just keep an eye on the fans here on this Mark DeRosa home run. Almost in unison you'll see fists go up in the air. Pow. 
I love that. Here's Herrera, and he fouls away. Give this Cubs team so much credit. Looked like they were down and out against Aaron Cook, who ended up giving up seven runs in six and a third. Jim Edmonds with a big day, his best performance as a Cub with a homer and a two run double. 0 2 on Herrera, the pitch. Oh, he did it again. Carlos Marmol strikes out the side here in the eighth. Cubs will try to add on to their lead. 10-9. Gail, what a day. It looked like it was all over, but the shouting early on. Scott Pasednik stays in to play center. And the new pitcher's Taylor Buckholtz. Got to the point where Lou took out his starting first baseman and catcher. But the guys who replaced them, key, key players. Hawk Power with two hits and two runs, and Henry Blanco with a two run homer. Picked up right inside the chalk line as Ionetta throws to first to get Soriano. Boy, and how about Carlos Marmel in that top half of the eighth inning? That was a complete overmatch. Three called strike threes, all on sliders, just locked up the Rockies hitters. We said what a big inning it was going to be in the top half of the seventh to put up a zero and get the team back in the dugout swinging the bats. They scored three runs in the bottom of the sixth to start to creep back into this ball game in that top of the seventh for John Lieber and Scott Ayer was huge to put a quick zero on the board get their team back up at the plate and they continued to ride that wave. Two and nothing on Fontenot. 14 times the Cubs have scored five or more in a frame. Backhanded play by Helton and he'll touch first. And don't forget Henry Blanco's first home run of the year. The first two runs that were scored in that seventh inning. Hank White launching one to left field. Here's the pitch to Blanco. Base hit in the center. So he's two for two. He's Lou after the ball game. He started the wrong guys. Look at Carlos Marmol in the top half of the eighth inning. Slider strike on the inside corner. Slider strike on the inside corner and slider strike on the inside corner. See you later. Momentum's a funny thing, isn't it? We're talking with Bobby Hall about that. I just know you don't want to be the player to stop the momentum. That, that's kind of what it is more than anything else. Your teammates establish a pattern and you don't want to be the guy to ruin it. Check swing by Micah. He'll look down to third and he was able to hold in time. And actually the point where I really thought the Cubs had a great chance to get in back into it was in the fifth. And Derek hit into a 4 6 3 double play. That's when Lou made the changes with Blanco and Hawk Power. As the Cubs were down 9 to 1. But then they got 3 in the 6th and 6 in the 7th. The 
Ray Fowle. And generally, if you're going to come back on a day like this, you do need to hit the ball out of the park, and the Cubs have done it. Two pitch swing and the miss strike three. We'll go to the ninth. Here comes Kerry Wood, Spielborgs, Atkins, and Helton. So it won't be easy in the ninth. Cubs lead by a run. Here's the closer, Kerry Wood. Facing Ryan Spillboards as we begin the ninth. Slider is low, ball one. One and one. Saw Carey last night in a non safe spot. All the outs were strikeouts. He gave up one hit, and that was to Spillboards. Three balls and a strike. Go three and two. Nasty slider on three one. Boy, if you're Ryan Spielborgs, what do you look for right here? It was a heater and he was able to fight it off. 39,686. And it's been a memorable one today. Cubs look for their fifth straight win. They keep coming back late, but today was a little different than the others. Ball four. So Carey will have to battle here after the leadoff hitter. Spielborg's just reached. Hey, Bob, we want to mention Mark Bonacani suffered a spinal cord injury on the college football field nearly 21 years ago at East Tennessee State. Today, the Chicago chapter of the Bonacani Fund is raising money and awareness for spinal cord injury research on one of the Wrigley Field rooftops. And Mark wishes Jim Hendry and the Cubs the best of luck the rest of the way. Outside ball one on Garrett Atkins. Mark's the son of former Hall of Fame linebacker for the Dolphins, Nick Bonacani. Good to have him here in Chicago. Quick throw to first, Spielborg's back. Outside, and now Henry's going to have to go out and chat with Carey. Just one of those regroup meetings, give Woody a chance to catch his breath out there, kind of clear his mind a little bit, get back into that strike zone. Stuff is very good today. Just having trouble finding the plate. Doubleheader of baseball action today here on Comcast Sportsnet. Three and oh. Todd Helton is on deck. Carey's had his number throughout his career. And three one.
that's going to be caught. I think they gave him the catch. Doesn't matter. They were able to turn the double play. Brian Onora called the out. I think Fontenot caught it before it hit the dirt. Two down here in the ninth. Good comeback by Kerry Wood. He was looking at a possible first and second situation with no outs. So the first out of this double play comes on the line drive right there. Fondo able to pick it right off the dirt. Doesn't take any chances. Didn't wait to see what the umpire called. Threw on to Cedeno. Easy double play. Here's Helton. Strike one. Oh, one pitch. High in the air. Hoff powers out with Fontenot and Kosuke Fukudome's under it, makes a catch, Cubs win! They trailed by eight runs on two different occasions today. Eight to nothing, then nine to one. They storm back with three in the sixth, six in the seventh. And they have won again. Their fifth straight to start the homestand. What a day. Well, you know things are going good when you come back from an eight-run deficit. The Cubs are winning the games they're supposed to win, and they're, now they're winning games they have no business winning. Let's go down to the field, Josh Morrow. All right, I got two guys here. I've got Jim Edmonds and Mark DeRosa, both heroes. Let me start with you, Jim. You feel like a Cub now? Uh, I don't know. I think the people in the bleachers still think I'm wearing red, but uh, I'm doing the best I can. I'm having a good time with the guys, and uh, we're winning, so that's all what it's all about. Your two biggest hits as a Cub thus far. Take us through them. Uh, I don't remember. You know, I, I was a, the best moment. The best moment of the day was being on second base with Mark at the home run. I mean, that's always the best, the biggest thrill to me is watching other guys get, do their job and come up with big hits. Right, I'll let you go. Congratulations on that, Jim Edmonds, with three RBI and his first home run as a Cub. Mark DeRosa, the game-winning home run. I, you know, I, being at Wrigley Field, I'm sure it just never ceases to amaze you what can happen here. That was awesome. I mean, uh, down eight nothing, we we're able to uh, battle back. A lot of guys contributed today. Uh, Jimmy had a big game. Fukudomi goes deep. I mean, the list goes on and on. It just shows you the character of our guys. Was there a moment where you started to feel, hey, this could happen? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think when Henry Blanco hit the two-run homer there in the seventh uh, to get it to about 9-5, 9-6, you never know what can happen in those situations. With, with the wind blowing out, too, obviously, you know, a game here is never over. It's never over. I mean, one run was not safe, but... Marmel came in, did an unbelievable job, and Kerry got the ground ball double play. You know, and that's going to be something that might get overlooked here, the way your bullpen shut everybody down uh, with the Rockies once you were down 8 nothing to keep it to keep them under under uh, double digits. Yeah, it's been one of the strong points. I mean, Marmel, I mean, I can't say enough about him. I think he's one of the best players in the game, to be honest with you. Him and Kerry have been phenomenal. When we get a lead, it seems like game over. So, uh... It's a great win. Uh, I know the fans were down on us early, but we were able to find a way. Well, they're up on you now. Congratulations. Yeah. All, All right, thanks. All right, a couple of heroes. Mark DeRosa, the game-winning homer, also had three RBIs, and Jim Edmonds with his first as a Cub. Guys? Josh, thanks for your hard work as well. We appreciate the pregame interviews. Uh, covered a 22-minute rain delay. But then the weather was beautiful. Bad start for the Cubs today, but a glorious finish. Yeah, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. We talked early in the ball game about the Cubs' ability to score runs, especially late in a ball game, and today was a perfect example of that. So the uh, Nissan drive of the game, no doubt about it. Mark DeRosa with a game-winning two-run homer in the bottom of the seventh. What a great moment here at Wrigley Field. We've had a lot of them here over the last year or so. This one just the latest. Well, this is the topper for now. Till tomorrow. The Cubs hoping for many, many more great moments here in 2008. The team with the best record in baseball.
keeps getting better. The Cubs are now 34 and 21 on the season. And their lead in the Central now up to two games over the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Get the pitching matchup for you for the Cardinals tonight. They're at home against Pittsburgh. Zach Duke for the Pirates. Todd Wellemeyer for St. Louis. What a day. And that's going to wrap up our game coverage. Stay tuned for Post Game Live. The final score. The Cubs come all the way back and beat the Rockies 10-9. Our next Cubs telecast will be tomorrow. 11.30 for Cubs pregame live. Bob and I will be with you at noon as Ryan Dempster will pitch for the Cubs and Glendon Rush expected to make his return to Wrigley Field for the Rockies. In-game scoring provided by Scorepad. And now for Bob Brindley, Josh Mora, and our entire Comcast Sportsnet crew, this is Len Casper. You've been watching exciting Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet. Deep left center field. Cubs lead! A two run homer for Pedrosa! How about that? <laughs> a surge of power in the sixth and seventh innings, and the Cubs beat the Rockies 10 to 9. Let's hear from Lou Pinella live at Wrigley Field. Guys uh, battled. 9 to 1 down. Took a player, couple players out to, to rest. And he's. Uh, these guys kept battling, putting runs on the board, capped off with DeRosa's two-run homer there in the, what inning was it? Seventh. Seventh. But uh, just a heck of a come-from-behind win. What can I say? Do you as a manager, I mean, get as excited as the... Yeah, I got excited today. In fact, when DeRosa's ball went out of the ballpark, uh, that's the, the loudest uh, this place has been all year, by far. It was uh, almost definitely. Lou, you kind of think it's, it's your year when you do take out two uh, it was our It was our day. Our day. That's just not... Uh, uh, we did give up nine runs, uh, but we scored ten. Uh, just a, a, a great team effort. Uh, Henry Blanco put half power in the ball game. Edmonds. I was really happy to see Edmonds swing the bat like he did today. We, we, we need that. That would be a big lift for this baseball team. And, and today, he, he contributed big time. But it was a good team win. What can I say? No, it was a, a, it was a great team win. People talk about left you got to have left-handed hitting to win. Today was an example, wasn't it? Yeah. You, you know, you, you, you've got to have a combination. But certainly, uh, today, uh, left-handers did their part and more. I mean, um, you know, we've been waiting for Edmonds to, to have a a breakout game, and, and, and today was it. Now, let's hope that uh, he follows up with, with a lot more of that, because like I've said before, I mean, he's an experienced player that's played in winning situations that can help you. Does it feel kind of like a little confidence booster for the guys? They know they're never really out of it? Well, we played that way all year. Um, we, 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 we've battled. We really have. I mean, I, I give these guys a ton of credit. Uh, now, we usually get back in the ball game or take a lead in a ball game, and somehow uh, they all end up close. But uh, uh, the important thing is that they get into the W column. Is Hoff Power showing that he does, might not want to go back to Des Moines? Well, yeah, he's showing that. Uh, there's no question. Um, you know, I, I told you that when we brought him up here, uh, we liked his bat. Uh, he, he, he had two really nice springs for us. And uh, we wanted to bring him up and, 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 and give him some experience and, and, and see exactly how he could perform up here. And, he, and he's holding his own quite well. So what's it like when this, the wind is blowing out in the ballpark? It seems like it's so small. Yeah, well, you know, you, you got to keep the ball down. Uh, that's, that's obvious. And, and today, Lily was up with all his pitches. Uh, couldn't get uh, any of his pitches down. And you get that ball up in the wind, and, and it's, it's going to carry. And uh, uh, and it did. It did early for them and late for us. 
Marmo in the eighth inning at 10 pitches. Yeah, no, and Marmo, uh, you know, he's, <laughs> he was sharp as a tack today. I mean, he's attacking the strike zone, and uh, he had uh, that breaking ball breaking off the side of a cliff. And uh, he, he, he got three hitters really, really quick. And um, Woody came in and, 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 and walked the first hitter and, and then induced a double play and, and got... Uh, um, helping to, to fly out the right. Uh, it, it was it was a great team win. It really was, and I, I, the, the crowd had to enjoy this. Lou, because I certainly did as a manager. I'm sorry. Lou, was there a moment where you felt the momentum swing? Um, I think when Edmonds hit that ball in the gap to right center field, I, I said to myself, you know, we we've gotten ourselves back in this thing. And. Uh, that, to me, uh, that, that, that was a point where I, 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 I thought that we had a, you know, a, a fairly good chance of, uh, of uh, getting, getting back into it, and, and we did. Have and, you ever been involved uh, as a manager or player where a team was down eight runs and came back? You know, I was managing, a, I was thinking of that on the bench. I, I managed a, a team uh, in New York. Uh, where Clemens was on the mound for the Red Sox, and they had a big, big lead. And we came back and beat them. Uh, I don't remember the uh, the exact score, or, or but I, I know that we were down eight or nine runs, and we came back and, and won the ball game. Uh, but outside of that, uh, no, you uh, uh, you win a game like this, and, and you feel you feel fortunate. So was it a tough call as a manager? Uh, it didn't hurt you to take out Lee and Soto, but at that point, you're obviously resting some guys, and then you know the wind's blowing out. Is that kind of a? That was on my mind too. It was the fifth inning; they had gotten their, uh, they hadn't gotten their last at bat, but Lee had. I, I wanted to rest a few more guys today, and, and and we just couldn't quite figure everybody into the equation. So we took the opportunity of well, let's let's rest them at least half the game. But Henry Blanco, I mean, he's swinging the bat. He's doing a nice job, and um, and Hoffpire uh, contributed. So it was a good team win. I mean, excellent, excellent team win. What can I say? Would you have kicked yourself if the game had finished nine six and not, or nine seven, and uh, you'd taken those guys out? No, I should have kicked myself. First of all, my my footer isn't that long. <laughs> <laughs> we have Mark Gross to wait, but I wouldn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's an excited Lou Pinella happy with the Cubs come from behind victory today. Hello and welcome to Lowe's Cubs post game live. I'm Gail Fisher alongside Dan Plesak. It was an excited newsroom as well as uh, we watched this ball game unfold. Hard to believe, Dan, when you look at the box score and when you hear Lou Pinella talk about, you know, you took Derek Lee out of the ball game, you took Giovanni Soto out of the ball game. Aramis Ramirez was already out, as was Terrio, and you still win this ball game. And now, uh, Danny, I'm going to get your thought, but we've got to go back out to Wrigley Field as Mark DeRosa takes the podium. You know, I, I, you know that game from, from the start, you were just like, oh, it's going to be one of these games. One, you know, I think when Henry hit the homer there in the sixth or seventh to make it 9-6, I felt like we had a legitimate chance. The way the wind was blowing, you, you, you knew it was just a, a couple fly balls and we were back in the game. So him coming off the bench and, and hitting that home run really, I think, energized our, our uh, bench. Ever been involved in a comeback quite like that, where you ended up getting a W? I don't, I don't know. Texas or here? I can't remember one like that. It's pretty special. I mean, uh, game was pretty ugly there early, and uh, Lou takes D. Lee out. He takes uh, Soto out, and so uh, and uh, Blanco comes, hits a home run. Huff Power goes two for three with uh, two doubles. Uh, just a, it speaks volumes for the character of the team and, and the fact that. Lou's not afraid to, to play everyone. Everyone feels like in that clubhouse that they're a part of the team and everyone's contributed in, in their own personal way to, to our victory so far this year. Mark, we talked so many times last year, seemingly you did also. The wind just didn't seem to blow out today. It did, obviously. What's it like playing in this park when the wind is that way? Well, I was disappointed Aaron Cook was pitching. I mean, you, you know, he's a, he one of the better pitchers in the game would have, would have big time sinker and anytime you're dealing with that it's gonna be tough to get the ball up in the air and looking at statistics the lefties have you know had the success off off him he's he's dominated right-handed hitter so Jimmy had a huge game uh, Fukudome had a big game um, 
I was saying as I was walking over here, I'm like, I don't even know what just happened. Like, give me a little heads up on, on who did what during the game because it, it just seemed to all of a sudden steamroll into us getting a victory. And one, one thing I'll say is uh, Carlos Marmol and, and, and Kerry. But Marmol coming in the eighth and just, he's been dominant all year. I, I, I don't think people realize how, I mean, we do, uh, the people in Chicago do, how, how good this kid is. Do you have the confidence of a winner that you can come back in any circumstance now? Well, I think today is one of those, early on, it was one of those games where we're like, uh, you know, it was going to be rough, but, but the way the wind was blowing, you never knew. I had, had the flags been blown differently, it would have been super difficult. But, I mean, they got a few runs there on, on some fly balls to left field as well. So it was just one of those days where we just happened to, to get hot at the right time. Is it a rare time? When you're up there and, and Cook is out, that you're actually trying to sort of drive a ball, get it in the air. Uh, Corpus is pretty much the same thing with the sinker and slider. You know what? I was just trying to get a base hit. I was actually sitting on a 3 2, sitting on a fastball away, a sinker away, and he threw me a slider. I was happy to get out in front of, in front of it. And, um, you know, a normal day that ball probably doesn't go out, but as soon as I hit it here today, I knew it was gone. Who called that the loudest of the year? Wrigley, you did that there. Could you describe the motion after you did that? Well, for me personally, uh, you know, this year, although the stats are, are pretty decent for, for, for what I've done so far, I felt like I haven't had a big hit for the team yet, you know? It's, it's, it's been a bunch of guys, but I haven't felt like I've, I felt like I've always tacked on when we've been winning. I wanted to contribute in a big way. I came up against Saito the other day, a chance to end the game and didn't get it done. And we end up winning that game, so, you know, it, it's forgotten about. But for me personally, those are situations you live for, just... Uh, Try, I actually just trying to tie the game and, 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 and pass the baton around. That's the way the team's been, been rolling. It hasn't been one guy. It's been different guys every night. Fontenot with the double last night and, and Sori coming through with the big hit. So we got a lot of faith in our bullpen. Once we get the lead, we feel like we're, we're pretty good. Could you sense the atmosphere as you're on the bases? And... Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, those, are, those are moments you, you, know, you never forget. Uh, you know, it's still May, but come back from an 8-1 to one deficit and at your home park and uh, in front of 40,000 is always special. All right, Mark DeRosa with the game winner. The Cobbs left the good times roll in the 6th and 7th. That's our Kawasaki stat of the game in the 6th and 7th innings combined. They scored 9 runs on 7 hits and sent 15 batters to the plate. All right, welcome back, Dan. I got to get your thoughts on this one. And for the viewers at home, I just want you to know these are the notes and the stats of the analysis that Dan Plesak has prepared for you in this game. All we have is a big <laughs> wow. I think the best part of this game, and this is a game that is going to be so good for this team long term, and I'll tell you why. It's so important when you have guys like Derek Lee and Aramis Ramirez and Soriano and Soto are having big years, but you look and you break down this game, the contributions from the guys that aren't really your frontline type players don't get a lot of the recognition, but your Mark DeRosa had a tremendous day. Jim Edmonds had a tremendous day. Henry Blanco came in, went two for two, hit the big home run. Scott Ayer did a great job. John Lieber sucked up some innings and did a great job to get the ball to Carlos Marmol. A lot of the guys that are the behind the scene guys, the lunch pail kind of guys, had a big part in this win. And that makes them feel good because, you know, Derek Lee, Aramis Ramirez, and the star power of this team are the guys that are going to get it done. But for those guys that have to take a back seat to be able to have a big part of this game, it's huge for them and it makes the whole team feel really good. And amazingly enough, three of this team's biggest hitters were on the bench when the Cubs made this come back. Time for our Feldco star of the game and it is Jim Edmonds of course. He had three runs and three RBIs with a huge two run double and he hit his first home run in a Cubs uniform and Dan you know I am a huge supporter of Jim Edmonds and, give, and being patient with the guy and, and letting him come around. Okay I'm kidding you and I have battled on this we've disagreed but today was his day. You know, Gail, there are some, there is a legion of Cub fans that are never going to accept Jim Edmonds because of what he did as a St. Louis Cardinal. But when you look at the nuts and bolts and break this down, he's not the same player that he was with the Angels in the early part of his years with the Cardinals. 
but what they are asking him to do is to play center field, which he can still do very well, and he's going to hit. Now, he has not gotten a lot of opportunities to play on an everyday basis, but the simple fact is he's a better hitter right now than Felix P.A. has shown that he can be. Now, Felix P.A. can go get the ball in both gaps. He's without a doubt the Cubs' best defender. But he has proven up to this point that he cannot hit consistently Major League Pitching. And if Jim Edmonds gets hot, he's done it before. And when a guy has done it before, you know it's in there. And you are more than happy to give me a few I told you so's at my desk during this game. A breakout game for Jim Edmonds. Uh, let's hope that continues. The Cubs get the come from behind victory. 10-9 to is the final. As we go to break, let's check out our Pontiac opinion poll question. And today we ask you... Are the Cubs a team of destiny? Can you believe this come from behind victory? Yes or no? Log on to ComcastSportsNet.com, click the link to Chicago, then go to the Cubs page to cast your vote, and we'll have the results later on Lone's Cubs Post Game Live. Time now for our four seasons. Who's hot? Who's not? Former Cub Jerry Hairston Jr. is hitting 429 over the last seven days and has five steals. Former White Sox center fielder Aaron Roan is hitting 500 with 10 RBI. And the Cards Adam Wainwright is 2 0. Who's not hot this week? Ricky Weeks is hitting 179 with 11 Ks. Hello Green is hitting just 154. And the Dodgers Brad Penny is 0 2 with an ERA over 7. I have an idea for tomorrow's show. Our sweep play of the game is what else? Mark DeRosa, two runs shot in the seventh as the Cubs came all the way back from a 9-1 deficit to take a 10-9 lead, and that would be the final Mark DeRosa with the game winner. My idea, tomorrow for the who's hot, who's not, the who's hot, the entire <laughs> Cubs team. Chicago Cubs team, why not? All right, they've won five straight now this week and they're sixth straight at Wrigley Field. They have now had the lead in 21 straight games and they haven't done that since 1934. I am your trivia queen today in this post-game show. Welcome back, everybody. Let's talk about pitching a little bit. It was a bad day for Ted Lilly on the mound. He lasted just three innings and got roughed up in that first inning. He gave up seven runs, only four of them earned, but just not the typical day for Lilly on the mound. Well, he, he just wasn't real sharp, Gail. And, and Lou touched on on the, on the post-game in the interview. He was just up with a lot of his pitches. He wasn't getting a lot of swings and misses. It looked like in inning number two, he was going to kind of turn it around. Here you see the leadoff of the game. Gets to this ball, and for the most part, Tavares just ran, outran the baseball. And he got himself in a spot here where it was first and third and nobody out, and was really one hitter away from getting out of this jam unscathed. Unfortunately, Todd Helton got a ball up in the air and a three-run home run. You're going to see right here a fastball up. And today, if you get the ball up in the air, the wind was howling out particularly the left center field, and all of a sudden now you're down 3 nothing. And then in the second inning, Ted looked like he got the wheels put back on, but then, you know, you get back into the third inning again, and he was just leaving everything up. Didn't have real good command of his curveball, and just didn't have one pitch, Gale, that he could go to when he was in trouble to be able to get a big out or get ahead with strike one. All right, well, Lily did face the music at Wrigley. He just got done meeting with the media. Let's listen in. Yeah, no, I mean, I knew we were going to score some runs and we were going to fight back, but <clears throat> I think when it got to when I got to nine and we're in the fifth, it's just, it's tough, especially with uh, Aaron Cook out there. Uh, he's been throwing the ball well, he's, and he's a, he's a tough pitcher, and, um, but, uh, you know, with our lineup, facing our lineup, there's, uh, there's really uh, not too many easy outs, and then, you know, what was huge for us today is, we put in uh, Henry, and he came up with some big hits, and so did Hop, Hop Power, and, and uh, Jimmy Edmonds had a good game. So, um, I, I wasn't so sure that uh, you know in the fifth inning I'd be sitting here happy about the outcome. What was wrong? What was today? <clears throat> I don't know. Um, you know, I I think that. Um, I was caught in between and in, in, uh, in, in, in trying not to overthrow, and but at the same time I, I was uh, maybe being a little careful at times, and that wasn't working either. So I was just out there searching. I mean, that was I mean, that was one of the uh, more frustrating outings that I've had in a long time. 
Um, you know, it seemed like it was one of those outings where I wasn't even sure what pitch to throw because I didn't know what it was going to do and how it was going to act. So, you know, it was real tough for <clears throat> for Giovanni to, uh, to put fingers down because uh, I think that he, you know, was possibly feeling the same way. When you get a big comeback like that, I mean, the next time out, do you kind of forget your outing and just know that you've got a team that seems to be able to come back and win? Yeah, I mean, I, I know that. I'm, I'm confident in our lineup, and, and I think that, uh, you know, the rest of our team is. But uh, I, I still feel like, you know, I have a responsibility out there to um, try and give us as many innings as possible. Uh, uh, I, was, I still put a big strain on the bullpen uh, again. And so... I'm obviously not happy about that and, and won't forget about that, but uh, I, I'm going to have to move on and prepare for my next start and and uh, make sure that I go out there and, and give us a strong outing. So, uh, you know, it's certainly a lot easier to accept when when we, you know, when we uh, find a way to come back and win a game that, uh, you know, that we were, you know, it didn't look so promising. So I'm sure... If you're if you're a Cubs fan and you're out there in the stands today, you're you're having a lot of fun. Okay, thanks, Ted. Mm -hmm. All right, so a tough a day for Ted Lilly, but I want to know what is Aaron Cook doing right now in the Rockies clubhouse? Right now, he's <laughs> he's, he's going to have a, to he's something. going to have a rough night's sleep, particularly when your offense spots you to a nine to one lead and a guy that's really been one of the few bright spots for the Rockies this season. This has been a team with a lot of their top players on the disabled list, trying to get some of those guys back. And this really looked like on paper a team that Ted Lilly, you know, without having a couple of the big bats, Tulowitzki, uh, Halliday, the left fielder, this looked like a lineup that Ted Lilly should be able to be able to capitalize on. We touched on that at a pregame show. It didn't happen. All of a sudden, you find yourself down nine to one. But I think Lou touched on it perfectly. This is a team right now that believes that they can win. This is a team that doesn't just count on one guy. You could go back, you know, 10 days ago, Alfonso Soriano pretty much took this team on his back. But this is a team with a lot of firepower. And they catch a day like today with the wind blowing out. They can put up runs in a hurry. All right, we're going to take another time out after the break. We'll have more Cubs post game live. Stay with us. And now it's time for the Stay in the Game Hold Statistics of the Day, brought to you by Just for Men Hair Color. After the Cubs took the lead, Carlos Marmol held on to it, striking out the side for his sixth hold in his last seven games. As these middle relievers keep their team in the game, you too can stay in the game with Just for Men Hair Color. Oh, one pitch. High in the air. Hawk powers out with Fontenot and Kosuke. Fukudome's under it. Makes a catch. Cubs win. Kerry Wood picks up save number 13 on the year as the Cubs beat the Rockies 10 to 9. Kerry closing things out. And Dan, the Cubs have a really great one two punch. And Carlos Marmel, who came in in the eighth inning, threw just 10 pitches and struck out the side. And then Kerry Wood coming in to closing things out. You know, Carlos Marmel has been good all season, but I don't know if he'll be able to throw the ball any better than he did this afternoon. 10 pitches nine strikes his breaking ball was as good as i've ever seen it this afternoon carrie wood got himself into a little bit of trouble on ninth with a leadoff walk was able to induce a ground ball double play then to get help and pop up down the right field line a good win and these two guys at the back end of that bullpen right now are throwing great you add bobby howry to that mix this is a team with a lot of options in the seventh eighth and ninth inning Still, as Lou Pinella pointed out, they did give up a nine runs in this game, so the pitching a little bit shaky, the starting pitching at least. Let's take a look at the home runs that fueled the comeback. The Cubs offense just pouring it on. It started in the sixth inning. Kosuke Fukudome getting a home run ball here. Well, number three, this is a ball that when the wind is blowing like it was this afternoon, you can get a ball with any authority up in the air. And they heard Jim Edmonds hits this ball to center field. You look at the swing off the bat, it looked like a lazy pop-up, but he hits the ball with tremendous backspin, and that ball went a long way. So it's now 9-4, to four, Rockies, and then in comes Henry Blanco. Seventh inning, he replaced Giovanni Soto, and Hank White hits a two-run home run. I think this was the most important 
swing of the day right here. I think this brought the Cubs to a point where it, now it's nine to six and you feel really good about it. And this has topped it off. Mark DeRosa. All right, the two run home run gives the Cubs the lead and that is your game winner. The Cubs were certainly home or happy in this one with that wind blowing out and they take advantage of it as they get the come from behind victory. It's their fourth come from behind victory uh, of, of the week. So uh, fourth straight. And we're going to take one more final time out here on Lowe's Cubs post game live. Don't go away. As we had to break, here's one more look at our Pontiac opinion poll question. Are the Cubs a team of destiny? Yes or no? Log on to ComcastSportsNet.com. Click the link to Chicago. Then go to the Cubs page to cast your vote. And we'll have the results next on Lowe's Cubs post game live. Welcome back. Earlier in the show, in our Pontiac Opinion Poll question, we asked, are the Cubs a team of destiny? They certainly uh, were today, coming back from an 8 to nothing deficit. 85% of you said, yes, they are. This is their year. 15% uh, still holding out because it is just May. But hard not to be excited, Dan, at this point, when you see a game like the one the Cubs had today. I know Lou Pinella says we're a team of destiny today. Whether or not they're a team of destiny for the rest of the year remains to be seen. But still, they're winning ball games that maybe last year, the last couple of years, they wouldn't have won. Well, one of the things you have to like, you go back to last night's game in a game where they didn't score, you know, the, the games against the Dodgers, the three-game series with the Dodgers where runs were hard to come by from both teams. They're winning low-scoring games. The pitching's been good enough. And the games that they haven't pitched particularly well, the starting pitching, the offense has bailed them out. That's a sign of a good team. And even though it's late May, these kind of wins like you have today where you have guys contributing that aren't the main cogs of this offense, it does nothing but make everybody on that team and on that bench feel better. This is a huge win for this team. Well, and it's not like everything is completely smooth and the Cubs aren't without their faults, Dan, but when you have a day like today, you give up nine runs. Uh, some of the pitching has been shaky. Some of the hitting hasn't always been there, but you still are pulling out W's. That has to say something about the depth of this team. Well, there's no question. And there isn't a team in Major League Baseball right now that is a perfect team that has five deep in the starting rotation. A lot of teams have some problems in the starting rotation. There's a good number of teams that the back end of the bullpen is a cause of concern. There are teams that aren't hitting. It's not to say that this Cub team isn't flaws. Everybody and every team could use some help. And there are some areas that you'd like to see the Cubs tighten this up. The four and five spots in the starting rotation. Mm -hmm. Possibly get another left-handed bat. Jim Edmonds may be the answer. Micah Hopower looks like he's going to do a good job swinging the bat. There are always areas that you'd like to improve on but I don't see any areas of this team right now where you see a big gaping hole I mean the problems that we're trying that the Cubs are addressing trying to find some left-handed power and, and to fi finish up the back end of the starting rotation those are minor problems compared to what a lot of teams in baseball are looking for right now. Well, Ryan Dempster takes the mound for the Cubs in Game 3 of the series tomorrow afternoon. Dempster is coming off of a good performance Monday. He got the victory against the Dodgers and sweated through a T-shirt and inning in the muggy conditions. Dan, it will be another warm day tomorrow at Wrigley. He has been, and I, I'd say this, I thought that he would take to this starting rotation and he would do a very good job, but I never anticipated that he would take off and run like he has. He's gone deep into game and he just looks like a much more confident pitcher and I, I, I really believe that I, I think when you're pitching out of the bullpen it's really hard if you have three pitches to make sure that you're going to go out there and get three pitches to be effective because you're only going to be out there for an inning 15 or 20 pitches and as a starting pitcher you may go out the first couple innings not have real command of your secondary pitches but it takes you a little while to find them in the bullpen you need to have them right off the get-go all right Cubs get the victory 10 to 9 is the final that's going to do it for us Dan and I will be back with Cubs free game live tomorrow Dave Kaplan brings you Chicago Tribune live at 530 followed by the Sox and Rays live from Tampa Bay at 6 o'clock for Dan Plesek I'm Gail Fisher thanks for watching we'll see you tomorrow